look, what's good, y'all boys? Welcome back to another reaction video. Today, right in the rolling sixties versus Savannah Quando Rondo's wild story. You feel me? Like I've been saying, I'm switching it up. You feel me? I'm doing different shit. You feel me? Uh, not switching up, but we're gonna be throwing some more shit in there. We still gonna be doing the music and some more shit on top of this, but this some just some different shit. You feel me? Just something different. You feel me? But uh. Lil Tim, uh, Lil Tim was trying to tell us, you feel me? Like this ain't nothing new. He wasn't nothing new to him. You feel me? That's just the first body y'all heard about and some more shit. So we finna see what him and Quando had going on in Atlanta before the little King, the little King Von situation. Episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we head down to the wildest place that you've I never knew about heard Quando of. Rondo before the Lil Tim situation, but I ain't know about the people he had around him. And apparently, Lil Tim a D1 crash out. So, but before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Yep. Before we get into it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, you feel me? It, it, this ain't nothing new. This is this our routine, you feel me? Go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to wait. Make sure you like and subscribe, you feel me? I'm going to wait. I bet. If you're new, you can also follow the Instagram page as well. So do that let's too. get into yep. it. Do that too. Right there. Do that too. Do all that. I'm going to wait. Yup. I bet. When most people think of Georgia, Atlanta is the only place that comes to mind. But realistically, Atlanta is not in Georgia. Okay, obviously it's located in Georgia, but it's so different than the rest of the state that it's really its own thing. While Atlanta is thriving fast paced in a business empire, the rest of Georgia is not so much. Literally anything outside of the Atlanta circle is country poor and lacking in economic development. And there's no city that personifies that more than Savannah, Georgia. The city is located all the way on on the east end of the state, right next to the ocean. But it's definitely not a beach paradise, so in order for it to make sense, let's dive into the history. During the 1900s to 1920s, Savannah was a successful industrial city, but since then it has declined in manufacturing and somehow tourism is the main source of employment. I definitely had to double check that after I read it. Like what? Who would spend their hard earned money to visit Savannah, Georgia? Ew. Well, apparently what? every year thousands of people come to see the Spanish architecture. Look, I know people have different interests, but how bored do you have to be to go travel to see some architecture? But in all seriousness, Savannah is kind of a decent place. It's somewhere in between the awfulness of Detroiters. Like buildings and shit. Like shit like that, like architecture, like bu buildings and shit like that. San Bernardino and the beauty of Seattle and San Diego. But it's definitely not a place that you want to mess around in. The average like income that. in Savannah is only 24,000 a year. That wouldn't even cover your gas money in California. I'm just kidding. But if the average person makes 24,000 a year, then you can be certain that the city has some major issues. The country town of 140,000 residents has a very dark side. Neighborhoods that breed some of the most dangerous people that you will ever come across. This is the real- said some of the most dangerous people and put a clip of Lil Tim from- yeah, But them before there, we get into bro. it, let me run the intro. Lil Tim. Savannah is very similar to many southern cities in the way that the streets work. Unlike the west or east coast, the vast majority of residents are below the poverty line. So the concept of one area being the hood and another being wealthy is something that's not very common. Pretty much everywhere you go has the same things going on. I say that yeah, to say that territory is not- hood everywhere. Like people be trying to classify like, oh, this state got, this, this state is the hood or this state is bad. This state, everywhere you go, gonna have a hood. Don't matter where you at. Everywhere gonna have a hood. Very important. There's no history of a certain hood having issues with another. For example, maybe someone gets into an argument at school with another person. Then boom, all of a sudden they're both rivals. They could be from the same neighborhood, it doesn't matter. In the South, pretty much everyone is ready for action. Mostly because it's legal to own and walk around with a BAM machine. And all of this makes for a wild, unpredictable, and chaotic environment where friends turn enemies and the smallest disagreements turn into major beef. And none of that is exemplified more than this first story. Let me introduce you to a man named Jason Johnson, also known as Camouflage. He grew up in the Westlake Projects, one of the worst neighborhoods in all of Georgia. But fortunately, by the age of 16, he started to create a buzz down south. His first independent album actually sold 50,000 copies in 2001. And I know that it may not sound like much, but that's insane for a first album. It caught the attention of Lil Boosie and Birdman, who he ended up getting close with. 
and in 2002, he released a hit song called boy. Cut Friends. Boy, Birdman gonna make sure he get around everybody, boy. Save, man. Boy, Birdman see a new artist, boy, yeah, I need that. This well, is when he started to blow. He was officially the first rapper to ever put on for Savannah, Georgia. But just as he was ready to fulfill his role, the streets of Savannah would do what they do. May 19th, 2003. Camouflage goes to the Pure Pain Studios on 37th Street. And after a night of recording, he walks outside the studio and heads to his car. But right there is a man in black. Bam. Nah, his little RP cut scenes is insane, bro. After the incident, Savannah's police chief, Willie LeVette, came out and made some interesting statements. He pointed out that this could be retribution for incidents that Camouflage was potentially involved in. But after a small investigation, none of that was true. Instead, rumors came out that a girl that he was dealing with had a jealous ex-boyfriend. And whether that exact story is true or not, it's the nature of the streets of Savannah. No also, remember the name of the police chief, because that will be important down the line. But anyways, after the passing of Camouflage, the city had a major drought in music. No one notable would come out of the region for a long, long time. And that takes me to a young man named Taekwon Bowman. Born in 1999, Taekwon had a rough start in the Westlake projects. His household was chaotic with his parents and it ended up involving CPS. When a young Taekwon received a serious burn on his skin, they decided that enough was enough. So Taekwon was adopted by his great aunt in the Fred Wessel apartments. However, her living conditions were not much better and the neighborhood was troubled as well. So after this, he bounced around the city in different foster care homes. This led to a sense of loneliness and abandonment that a child can never get back. And because of this, he became out of control. And it all started at 11 years old. One night at his aunt's house would change his life forever. He got into a scuffle with his cousin and ended up hurting him pretty badly. So his aunt called the police on him and he got seven days in juvenile. After this introduction to the system, Bro. he kept getting in trouble over and over again. At the age of 13, he cut off his ankle monitor and began hitting houses. He consistently did this for a couple of years and was able to scrap together enough money to survive on his own. He spent many nights alone by himself trying to find a couch to crash on. His parents were nowhere to be found and he felt unsure about staying with his great aunt. And just like anyone without a good home, the streets became his first family. And for him, it wasn't a specific neighborhood or block. In order for this to make sense, let's head to two 2010. During this time, some of LA's biggest street ballers decided to do business and move out to Georgia. And the majority of them just so happened to be rolling 60s. And over time, as more and more LA guys moved to Georgia, they started to bring their colors with them. The first area to start repping 60s were the south side of Atlanta, technically known as Clayton County or Clayco. And they have steadily grown to thousands of members throughout the area. In fact, many of Atlanta's famous rappers are known to be a part of the 60s. Anyways, through business dealings, the Rolling 60s spread to Savannah as well. In fact, they spread to the West and South Side areas, both of which Taekwon lived in. And by this time, Taekwon was ready to join the new group and fully immerse himself in the streets. And for him, it all started in 2014 while he was locked up with a fellow teenager named Quaffy Murray. During this time, they became best friends and had plans to take over Savannah together. But right after they got out, Taekwon was caught with a BAM machine and was sent right back. And here is where tragedy hit. A BAM machine? April 25th, 2014. Quaffy wakes up and decides that he machine. wants to run inside his friend's house and take a tool that he had just purchased. Wow, Quaffy Murphy, what a good friend to have. So Quaffy runs inside his house and takes what he wants. And when his friend comes home, he realizes what's missing. He knows that something fishy is going on. So he contacts his friends and lets them know what happened. And listen to this, Quaffy is brutally honest and says, yeah, it was me who took it. So instantly the friends are on a hunt to go find Quaffy and get it back. So the next day, Quaffy finds someone who wants to purchase it. However, he knows that there could always be something sketchy going on. So he contacts an older guy from the neighborhood named Alan Moore to roll with him. On the morning of April 26th, they all meet up in Alan Moore's driveway on 3800 Bowl Street. The buyer's name is Norman Koontz Jr., but more commonly known as Juki. And I don't think that he was there to purchase anything. Bam. Juki ended up getting life, but that did nothing for Taekwon's peace of mind. In fact, it devastated him and only made his heart colder. So when he got out, he knew that he needed a tool. However, Why shortly after, he was...
That's your peoples, bro. You going in the man crib taking the gun, bro. You need the gun, bro. Like, let me let me see let me see that real quick. Uh, with it and sent right back to juvenile for another two years. I don't know. Let me not judge. Maybe the police officers are way better out there. But I've never seen anyone get caught this many times. Regardless, the two years changed him for the better and he found a new identity. Quando Rondo was the new name and music was the new career. So literally the day he got out, he recorded freestyles while banging on his car. They went went absolutely viral on Instagram and it caught the attention of Atlanta rapper Lil Baby. And this guy just so happened to be connected to Quando through the rolling 60s. So in January of 2018, they released a hit song called I Remember. And this was the start of a huge mainstream career for Quando. However, many people didn't know about what was going on back home in the streets of Savannah. The rolling 60s were taking over the streets in the worst way possible and it all peaked in 2018. By this time, they had expanded to over 100 members and did not have any care for the well-being of their city. And starting in June of 2018, they went on possibly the most reckless spree in Georgia history. Let me introduce you to a man named Sean Trey Grant, also known as Puff. This guy has been a community activist for a long time, preaching peace, unity, and economic oh development. And to spread his message, he started a group called what the they did to this man, and bro. their mission was to go around Savannah, talk to the youth, and set them on a productive path. And on the side, Sean Trey also owned a catering business as well as being a DJ on weekend nights. Truly a great representative what for Savannah. Man, but bro. unfortunately, the rolling 60s do not care who you are, and they will use whatever tactics they can to get you. This time, they used a woman named Nalante Grant and GGs. here's how it went. June 15th, 2018. Chantre goes to a local casino and wins a whole bunch of money. And of course, he happened to be with Nalante Grant the whole night, who he had just met. So after his lucky night, Nalante starts plotting. She contacts Rolling 60s member Dante Dunham to inform him of who she's with. She mentions that he has a lot of winnings. So after some sweet talking, he supposedly mentions to her where he lives. And that's all it takes. She shares That's the information with Dante and he heads all out to takes, the bro. Won't get me. Won't get me, bro. Won't. Won't get Dress. me like that. And there he not waits like for Sean Trey to get home. Not, not like not with no female, bro. Not like that. You won't get me. Cause it ain't that serious to me, feel Unfortunately, me? this would money. not end well for him. This incident completely shocked the community because Puff was known as the kindest man ever. He was the type to give the shirt off his back to someone less fortunate. This just goes to show how bad the Rolling 60s truly are. And sadly, the money-hungry crew was not done yet. The next month would be even worse. The 60s got desperate and started seeking out houses to hit. And that takes us to July 23rd, 2018. The Rolling 60s Cordell Richardson finds a house on Waltz Drive that he thinks is unoccupied. However, inside is a 63-year-old grandpa named Eric Cooley. Cordell would drive away and assume that he would never get caught. And for the meantime, that was true. Two days later, apparently Dante Dunham ran out of Sean Trey's winnings. So he goes looking for money. July 25th, 2018. He drives out to East Bolton Street. You ran out of money already? For y'all to hit a lick on that nigga, I would hope he made somewhere, you know, he made at least 10 bands, 20, 15, 20 bands that night. That night at the Keys Casino for y'all to hit a lick and kill the dude. I hope y'all, I hope y'all, I hope he made it. Y'all took at least 10, 15, 20 off him, bro. And for you to run out of that in two days and be back doing the same shit is insane, my boy. Street and finds a house that he thinks is unoccupied. However, in the kitchen is a 26-year-old named Robert Lee Jr. And At I this point, the Howard niggas just running in niggas' houses, killing niggas. Killing innocent people, just running in people's houses, killing niggas. Boy, you run up on, you run up in here, I ain't gonna be the one getting killed, bruh. That's a, that's a promise. That's a fact. Run up in, you run up in somebody else's crib and kill them because you trying to break in, you trying to steal their shit. Shit, no. Shit, no. The rolling 60s need to be stopped. And just when you thought that the summer couldn't get worse, one last incident would take place. August 5th, 2018. The Rolling 60s Javon Williams gets the drop on arrival from a girl they both know. So he waits for the night until 19-year-old Jernard Burton pulls up to the 900 block of Carter Street. Bang! 
All of this took place within three months. Five people in three months in the small city of Savannah, Georgia. Well, it was only a matter five, of time before- Five civilians at that. Five people who was just in their crib, just in their crib. Or this reckless crew would be fully investigated. Savannah police tracked the phone of Nalante Grant and found that she had shared her location with Dante Dunham. From there, they searched his phone and found the rest of the information they needed. And because of this, they also tied Dunham to the loss of our Darren Jefferson in 2013. February 1st, 2019. You doing dumb shit and you doing more dumb shit just to not get caught, but then you doing more dumb shit get you caught for the old dumb shit you done did. And just don't, just leave the dumb shit alone. Operation Third Time's the Charm. And why did they call it that? Well, this was their third attempt on dismantling the Rolling Sixties. And this one was successful with six life sentences and four other terms as well. For a small city like Savannah, this was a major win for the DA and police department. Somehow, Quando Rondo missed catching any implications in this whole takedown. And honestly, nobody knew about his friends back home. In fact, Quando's career took off alongside NBA Youngboy. And for that reason, many people thought that he was from Baton Rouge. That's how little was known about Savannah, Georgia. But all of that would change in 2020. This is when Quando Rondo and Youngboy began exchanging words online with King Vaughn. And for those who don't know, this guy was known as Chicago's most feared man. So the internet went back and forth between the Savannah Rolling 60s and Chicago's O Block. And it got to the point where King Vaughn would even threaten to put hands on Quando Rondo. Little did he know the Savannah Rolling 60s are not people you want to mess with. And here is where the internet that erupted, you know, because I guess if you're from Chicago, then you have to be dangerous. And at the same time, everyone was downplaying the country boys of East Georgia. That takes us to thinking no they was thinking they was some they was some yeah, thinking they was just some old n like I was saying and like I said in my other reaction video, bro. You gotta watch everybody the same, bro. Everybody, anybody can aim a gun and pull a trigger, bro. Anybody, any everybody gonna bleed the same, but it's just about who gonna do it first, but that's it. It ain't about who who the who more of a killer. It ain't about who more of this, who more of that. Nigga, it's about whoever gonna up it and shoot first, bro. That's what it's about, bro. November six. In that situation, whoever who gonna freeze up, who not gonna freeze up, bro? Cause somebody gonna do one and somebody gonna do the other one. It's 2020. At this time, King Von, Lil Durk, and the whole OTF are living in Atlanta. And on the night of November 6th, they get word of Quando Rondo being at a local club. Most of the OTF guys leave it alone, but King Von is all about his business. So he gets up in the middle of the night and heads down to the location. He waits for Quando Rondo to leave the club. So Quando walks to the parking lot and right there is King Vaughn. Bah, bah, bah. King Vaughn completely manhandles him like a child. Quando's right hand man Lil Tim notices what's happening and sprints over to help. And he decides to take it to a whole nother level. Bam. This incident truly showed one thing to the world. It's not about where you're from, it's about how you come. Yeah, right. Whoever like I just Like I was just saying, bro. Real shit, bro. Don't matter who you is, bro. Has the upper hand in any situation will most likely win so you can Ooh, play all the games has the upper hand in any situation will most likely win so you can play all the games about which city is the hardest but in all honesty none of that matters none of king it matters. was feared because of everything he did in chicago but in georgia none of that matters they do not care about your city not just george none of that matters nowhere bro none of that matters nowhere bro plain and simple so for anyone who tries to build their credibility in their city, just know that it's an illusion and it only matters in your city. Once you leave or the people in your city leave, you're left with zero accomplishments and no one cares about your Nobody tough guy past. Well, after this, the internet trolls have been telling Dirk be, look, to slide. There's going to be somebody like you everywhere. Somebody, there's gonna be somebody like you everywhere. You not the only demon walking For around Vaughn. But let's be honest, all of that is unrealistic given his status. But that being said, you need That's to- they thought. Stop acting tough in your songs if your actions don't back it up. Because at that point, you're spreading a false image to the youth that you're not willing to pay the consequences for. Well, since then, Quando Rondo has actually been targeted multiple times. Thankfully, he's been fine each time. The only thing that's weird to me is that he's been dating a high schooler. Like, bro, what are you doing? You're rich. Regardless, he's been making a comeback in music, dropping hit songs like 6-0 Business. On the other hand, Lil Tim is on house arrest while fighting off his charges. 
charges. Some say he was justified, but others say that he was wrong for what he did. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. But to finish up the video, I have to include this wild story about Savannah. So if you remember from earlier in the video, there was a man named Willie LeVette. Well, for decades, he was the police chief of Savannah. He was known for his harsh stances against crime and wanting to clean up the streets. All of that is commendable, but his reputation would take a major blow in 2014. After a federal investigation, it came out that he received $70,000 in bribes to turn his back on some activities going on. So after all, he received seven years in prison. But here's the thing, while he was in prison, he received a $130,000 a year pension. Yes, while he was in there, he was paid $910,000 of tax money. And to this- So they sent this man to jail for him to retire and for him to just sit there and basically, basically getting paid while in jail. He was getting paid to go to jail just to come out to a half a ticket plus. To this day, he still gets paid. How this is possible, I don't know, but Savannah, Georgia is a wild place. But that's going to do it for this episode of Swamp. Man, look. Man, look. So what did this video teach us, class? You feel me? Don't don't judge people just because of where they from, bro. There's going to there's be a killer everywhere you go, bro. Like the man said, it's gonna be about it don't matter who you is, where you from, how many bodies you already got, how many times you done shot a gun, how many times you done shot somebody. At that moment in time, it's all about who gonna up first and who gonna pull the trigger first. And who gonna freeze up and who not gonna freeze up. That's what it's about at that that's what it's about in the moment of time, you feel me? But I don't got too much more to say, bro. We see what Lil Tim was on, we see what they on and we see what Atlanta was already about before they they were trying to say they were trying to say oh Atlanta wasn't they ain't never killed nobody before in Atlanta in Savannah or something like that but shit everywhere everywhere got a story you feel me everywhere you go is gonna have a story and uh yeah everywhere you go It's going to have a story. But I don't got too much more to say. If it makes you like, comment, subscribe. Let me also want to see down in the comments below, bro. Um, yeah, I'm going to get up out of here, though.